you know what? I can do better than that. Much better. If you've watched some of my videos before, you'll know that I love board games and I'll jump at any excuse to combine my two hobbies. So today I'm going to make a dice tower and I thought it'd be cool to make it out of this old fence post that I've had lying around forever. I'm pretty sure this is Totara as that was a common timber used for fence posts back in the day, but now it's a protective native timber in New Zealand so you can't really buy it. So first up, I need to cut the post into some manageable pieces and then I can take it over to the planar thicknesser to clean it up on three sides. These old fence posts often still have nails in them so I did do a quick check and I found two that I had to dig out with a chisel. After cleaning the faces up, the timber is looking pretty good, although there are a few cracks I'm a little bit worried about. We'll just see how they turn out. Now it's time to resaw the post into some planks. Ultimately, I want each plank to be 10mm or 0.4 of an inch thick, so I cut them to 12mm or just under half an inch so that I can bring them to final thickness back on the thicknesser. My bandsaw has a pretty dull blade and isn't great for resawing, so instead I just use my table saw to cut halfway through and then I flip the post over to cut the other half. I repeat this process as many times as I can to get as many planks out of the post as possible. And with all the planks cut, I can take them back to the thicknesser and bring them down to 10mm or 0.4 of an inch. With the planks all milled up, I can start to cut them down to size. I start off by ripping all the planks to the width of the largest piece I need, which is 90 millimeters or just over three and a half inches. On to some sanding. Now, sanding the edges of a 10 mil board can lead to rounding the edges over. So as a hack, I clamp them all together, which gives me a much larger area to sand and I can do them all at the same time. And similarly, when sanding the faces, I also clamp them all together, which also allows for faster sanding as I'm doing them all at the same time. Now we can cut the first two pieces to final size. These will be the two sides of the dice tower and they'll be 210 millimeters or roughly 8.3 inches long. I'm using my crosscut sled here not only to get a nice clean cut, but to ensure both pieces are exactly the same size. The interior pieces of this dice tower are only 60 mil or two and a third inches wide. So I need to rip a few of my planks down to this width and give them a quick sand. I can then start cutting the remaining pieces to size with the crosscut sled. Some of the internal pieces have some odd angles, so I use the drop saw to cut these. So up until now, we've just been cutting out the pieces for our dice tower. So if we put them all together, we can get a general idea of what it's going to look like. So now we need to actually attach it together. And I want to attach this together with magnets because I want to be able to flat pack it, maybe pack it inside an existing board game or something like that. Um, and magnets are just cool. But the problem is I need to drill the holes for the magnets in the exact location corresponding to each piece, which is pretty hard just to do on a drill press. So what I've done is I have 3D printed a bunch of hole guides and the idea is that they have a little lip here that I can just slip the, uh, that one's a bit tight, try the other one, 
need to maybe do a little bit more sanding. But the idea is we can just slip the guide over the top of the piece of wood. And then I have all the exact holes laid out for exactly where I want them. And then I have the exact same thing set up for each piece of wood. So if we get the um, get this part here, that should slide in there. And then I can put that in the drill press, drill down through the holes, and I'll know that that is exactly in the same place as those two holes. So when I put the magnets in, that should all clip nicely together. Okay, we got two sets of holes that we're going to drill, or two depths. The first is on the sides, and so the, both sides we want the depth come down just enough to fit the magnet in. And then other than the sides, everything else is on the edge. So we're going to need to reset our depth for all of the edge ones. So I'm going to start off setting the depth for the sides first, we'll do all of those, and then we'll move on to the edges. But I'm going to use a piece of scrap first to make sure I get my depth correct so it fits the magnets in properly. So with a bit of trial and error, I've got a hole that's the perfect depth for my magnets. So I'm ready to start with that. With all the holes drilled on the side pieces, I adjust the depth stop on the drill press to suit the internal pieces. And then it's back to drilling more holes. And more holes. Until eventually, they were all done. Now it's time to glue in the magnets. I'm using a medium thickness CA glue here as I've noticed that the thin glue can seep into the wood and cause staining. Also, going back to drilling the holes, it's better to drill your holes slightly too deep because later on, if your magnets are proud of the wood, not only does it give you unwanted gaps between your parts, but it's hard to sand off any glue squeeze out you might get. Another thing to be really careful of is getting the polarity of your magnets correct. I would constantly double check my work before gluing any of the magnets in. Then after all the magnets were glued in, I gave all the pieces a light sand to get rid of any glue squeeze out. And now for the moment of truth to see if I got all the magnets put in correctly. I gotta say that I'm pretty happy with how this fits together and the magnets are plenty strong enough to hold everything in place. And for a finish I'm using some Rubio Monocoat because it's just so darn easy to apply and it's pretty foolproof. Furthermore, you don't run the risk of dust settling on it while it dries and giving you a rough texture like you get with many other finishes. At this point, I thought I was done, but after a quick test I discovered that the dice would tumble right out of the tower skid across the table, over the edge, and onto the floor. So it was obvious I needed to make a dice tray to catch the dice. So I grabbed one of the 10mm planks that I'd milled up earlier, and I ripped it to 70mm or 2 and 3 quarter inches wide. Before cutting all the sides of the box, I want to make a dado down the length of the plank to fit the bottom of the box. I'm doing that now as it's much easier to make the dado in one long piece than it is on several short pieces later on. Instead of mucking around with a dado stack, I'm going to make several passes with my regular blade until I get the dado to the correct width. I take each pass on a scrap piece of wood first and compare it to the thickness of the bottom of the box, sneaking up on the perfect fit. This is going to be a pretty simple box with mitered corners, so the next step is to cut the sides and the ends over on the drop saw, using a poor man's stop block to make sure they're all cut to the same size.
The bottom is made out of some scrap 9mm or 5 16 inch ply which I trimmed to width on the table saw and to length on the drop saw. I'm going to cover this in leather later so it doesn't really matter what kind of ply it is. Only one more step to go before I can glue it together but I figured it's a good time to do a quick dry fit to make sure it all goes together nicely. And so far it's looking pretty good. So the next problem is that the dice tray is too tall for the dice tower. So I need to cut out a notch in one end to allow for the opening of the dice tower. I made a pattern with my laser cutter, but in the past I would have made the template by hand as it's pretty easy to cut and sand some thin MDF into a nice pattern. Then after tracing the pattern onto one of the ends of the tray, I roughly cut the pattern out over on the bandsaw. Now to clean up the rough edges left by the bandsaw. I use some strong double sided tape to attach the box end to my template so I can use a flush trim bit over at the router table. This piece is pretty small and I could easily tip it while I'm trying to route the edges. So to help increase the stability of it, I tape another scrap piece of wood of the same thickness next to the box end. Then it's over to the router table to trim the end to the pattern. Now it's time for the glue up. Now gluing mitre joints is a pretty tricky business, but using blue tape to hold it all together works surprisingly well. So after adding tape to all but one of the joints, I can flip it all over and add some glue to the joints. Try not to use too much so I can avoid glue squeeze out. Then I can sit the bottom in place and carefully wrap the sides around it. And add a final piece of blue tape to hold the last join. In the end I decided to add a few clamps as well but I was very careful and barely tightened each clamp. Later on, after the glue was dried and the box was out of clamps, I gave it a final sand and used the round shaft of a screwdriver to lightly close any gaps showing on the mitre joins. I want to apply finish before gluing the leather in place, so I add some masking tape to the bottom before applying some Rubio Monocoat. I want to add some small rubber feet to the bottom of the tray to prevent it from sliding around. I just use my eyeometer to position them and then I use a punch to mark where to drill the holes. Instead of using the blue tape trick to mark how deep I want to drill the holes, I simply push the drill bit all the way into the chuck until only a small amount of the bit is poking out the end. This is pretty important as you don't want to drill right through the bottom plate at this point. The screws I have are a little too long, so I trim the ends off before screwing the feet in place. On to gluing the leather in. I started by cutting a scrap piece of wood to the exact internal dimensions of the tray and used this as a guide to cut the leather to size with a Stanley knife. I did a bit of research on what glue I should use when gluing leather to wood and most people seem to say that plain old wood glue works just fine. So using a few different small brushes, I carefully coat the bottom of the tray with wood glue. Then I can put the piece of leather in place and using the same guide block I used to cut the leather, I'm able to clamp it in place while the glue dries.
And having never worked with leather before, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. This is actually a gift for a friend, so as a finishing touch, their daughter drew this fantail which I was able to engrave on the top piece of the dice tower. Well that's it for this video, I had a real good time making this one. Don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next one.